Okay, so you may have noticed this trend happening on YouTube over the last couple of weeks of seemingly a lot of YouTubers quitting YouTube, uh, especially some pretty big heavy hitters of this platform, Tom Scott, for example. People that have been doing it for a decade or longer and have millions and millions of subscribers announcing that they're either retiring or cutting back their production or changing their relationship with their channel and with their audience for various different reasons. Now, Rick made an excellent video about this, as did Marquez Brownlee, and I wanted to throw my thoughts out there because I think there's a lot to be learned here, not just for YouTubers, but for musicians or anyone who works in a creative space. If your job is tied to your creativity, I think there's a lot to be learned from these videos, these creators that are announcing that they're leaving the platform. Now, I just watched MKBHD's video on it and it's excellent. And he said two things in his video that I wanna to touch on here uh, because I think they apply to musicians as well as YouTubers. So Marquez Brownlee sort of draws this comparison of being a YouTuber to being like a professional athlete. Now, I don't follow sports, so I'm gonna change that to being a professional musician. In order to go pro, there's a certain level of time and effort and dedication that has to go into learning your instrument and developing your taste so that you can actually make a living doing this. You have to spend years held up in your bedroom or your basement shedding on your instrument, learning, taking lessons, maybe going to school and listening to tons and tons of music, developing your ear to get to the point where you're actually capable of being a competent and professional and creative musician. So being a YouTuber is kind of the same thing. There's a lot of work and effort that goes into building your channel and figuring it out. There's a lot of creative work that goes into making your videos and, and, and trying to get it up off the ground, learning how the platform works before you can go pro, for lack of a better term. For me, YouTube started in late 2017, early 2018. Uh, I'd been a full-time musician for six or seven years at that point, and I needed a creative outlet. I needed something that was different than what I was doing as a hired gun guitar player. I was touring with a few different bands, I was teaching guitar lessons, I was playing church gigs, and none of that was purely creative. Being a hired gun, I was playing music and I was touring and having a lot of fun, but I was playing music that I didn't write. I was playing guitar parts that mostly I didn't write or record. I was teaching songs that weren't mine and I felt the need to have a voice. I felt the need to put myself out there creatively in some way. And YouTube for me was that platform. I was obsessed and still am obsessed with YouTube. I love what YouTube is. I've been watching YouTube as my primary source of media consumption since about 2009 or 2010, and I still am today, because at its core, YouTube is a place where people go to learn. This is what makes it different than things like TikTok or Instagram. It's not at its core a social media platform, it's a search engine and it's an education platform, in my opinion. So I started YouTube as a fun, creative outlet. I was interested in cameras and editing and filmmaking. I liked the process and still do like the process of making videos. It engages that creative part of my brain in the same way that writing music or recording music does. I still genuinely love it. But this goes in to the second point that Marquez made in his video, which is saying that creative jobs don't scale like regular jobs. And this is completely true. Creative jobs by nature start as being purely creative. So for you musicians out there, it starts by you just being creative in your bedroom, learning your instrument, playing songs, maybe writing songs, maybe learning how to record yourself and uh, produce yourself. It's purely a creative exploration and expression. And while you're doing that, you're building your skill set, you're building your taste, you're building your ears, your chops on your instrument, all that stuff is growing as you're spending time just being creative. Same thing happens with YouTube. In the early days of a YouTube channel, it's purely creative. You don't know what works, so you're just trying everything. And it's really exciting. I remember that first year or two of YouTube was just so fun because I, I was waking up every day excited to start work on another video or edit the thing I shot yesterday to try something else out because you didn't know what would work and what wouldn't work. So it was kind of freeing in that way. But as you start to grow and garner some attention as a musician, you start to land a few gigs, you start to get the attention of some local players or writers around. There are things that 
get attached to it that make it no longer a purely creative expression. So now you start to get hired for gigs and it's not just about playing guitar in your room anymore. Now there's songs that you have to learn. You have to show up for rehearsals on time. You have to make sure your gear is sorted. There's some responsibility attached to your creative outlet. With YouTube, you start to garner the attention of some brands. Maybe they wanna work with you, they wanna sponsor a video, they wanna send you a piece of gear, they want you to review something. Now there is some responsibility there. Uh, or you start a, a Patreon, for example, and, and you have a responsibility to your followers who are paying you each month for guitar lessons or something. Uh, so that you can actually start to turn this creative outlet into a living, into a business. And with that are some things that take over from the creative element of why you started this to begin with. You have to give some of your time and energy away from the creative work towards the administrative business side of things, whatever those are. Now, I don't know how to avoid that. And Marquez in his video says the th same thing. I don't, I don't know that that's avoidable. At some point, as you start to grow, as this thing starts to scale, you sort of become the dog that caught the car a little bit where you were working for something for so long and you finally get it. And then you kind of have to figure out how to manage it and how to actually continue doing it. And this is where the burnout can start to set in. This is, uh, at least in my experience, where it started to set in about two years ago. My channel got big. It got to the point where I was able to do this full time. But with that came this sort of sense of responsibility, this sort of anxiety of, well, I gotta keep this thing growing and this is paying my bills and this paid for my house. And there's all these things that start to get attached to your creative ideas, your creative output. And this is where it gets tough. When your income is tied directly to the quality and quantity of your creative output, that's where you really start to get into dangerous territory in terms of your mental health and in terms of burnout. Whether you are a musician, you're a songwriter, you are a filmmaker, a photographer, uh, uh, someone who, who is a, uh, writes code. Um, I just finished um, Adam Savage's book, Every Tool is a Hammer, and, and he talks about how we are all makers. If you work in a creative field, you are a maker. And I think anyone who is a maker deals with this at some point, whether you're a carpenter that makes furniture for a living and starts to sell your furniture, or you're a YouTuber who starts to you know build a business around your YouTube channel, it gets tough when your creativity and income are directly linked. And I think this is what happens to a lot of creatives and a lot of YouTubers, specifically people that don't have a network of other creators around them. I'm very lucky in that I have a really close-knit group of people who do what I do that I can talk to on a daily basis and share my, my worries and my thoughts and frustrations and be a sounding board for their worries and thoughts and frustrations and we can compare notes. And I think that's one of the first pieces of advice that I wanna give in this video. Whatever you're doing, find a group of people, find a network of people that are doing what you are doing, specifically what you are doing and stay in touch with them. Text thread, have weekly Zoom calls, whatever it is, but find your people and stay connected with them. Because if you get into this place of burnout and you isolate, it's a recipe for disaster. The second thing is something that Marquez said in his video that I purely agree with, which is keep creativity at the core of everything. So for me, when I started YouTube, part of what I was so excited about was learning the craft of video making, learning how cameras worked and lighting and, and editing. And, and I still love that to this day. I love setting up shots. I love editing videos. Uh, I love uh, lighting. Marquez says he got lucky in that way. And I think I did too. I love the process of making videos, but not every successful YouTuber I know feels that way. And so they have to find other ways of keeping creativity at the core of what they're doing. So if you're a musician who's struggling with burnout and you feel like you might be getting to the point of throwing in the towel, 
Aside from getting a community of people together, find a way to keep your creativity at the core of what you're doing. Like I said, for me with the video making, the act of video making itself is the act of creativity that I like, that keeps me interested in doing this. If you're a touring musician or a hired gun musician or a music teacher that's struggling with burnout, try writing music, try picking up a completely different instrument. You know, for me, I'm learning about drum machines and groove boxes and synthesis right now because it's really interesting and it's another cool creative outlet that I am enjoying. So the third thing is something that I tell people whenever they reach out to me to ask about starting a YouTube channel. Over the years, I've talked to dozens of musician friends of mine who have wanted to know what it's like starting a YouTube channel because they think they want to do it for themselves. And one of the things that I tell them is develop an income stream, develop your primary business, your primary income stream that is not your YouTube AdSense revenue. Do not rely on Google or YouTube for your income. A few years ago, I started to recognize that I can't be subject to you know, a, a drop in my YouTube views cutting my income in half for that month. It's just, it's, it's too unstable. So I needed to develop something that was outside of the YouTube revenue stream and it was the video courses. And that's what it is today. My primary business is my, my video courses. That's how I make a living. And that's how it is for most people in our niche that have video courses or, or educational material for sale. You know, YouTube is our platform, it's our creative expression, it's our voice, it's where we have our audience, it's where we engage with community and help build community and we educate people. And then we offer a product for people that wanna go deeper or wanna support what we do. We have something there that's for offer, but it's not directly tied to how well my channel does, how many subscribers I get that month, how well my videos do that month. You can watch dozens of videos on this platform of people explaining how much money they get paid for a million views, and it's actually not that much in a lot of cases. So if your channel, over the course of a year, your channel ebbs and flows. You have months where you're just killing it, and then you have months where it feels like the sky is falling and nobody's watching your videos. Uh, and that takes an emotional toll and it's made even worse by your income dropping. And this is what I was saying earlier. It's tough when your creative expression and your creative voice is tied directly to your income. This is part of where you start to deal with that, that burnout situation. So for musicians or, or songwriters, I think it's important to think about developing an income stream that is related to your creative expression, your creative output, but is not directly tied to your gigs. Uh, I don't know what that is for you. The point is diversifying your business, diversifying your income to sort of hedge your bets against the success or failure of your gigs for that month or uh, how many streams you got on Spotify or how many views you got on YouTube. And for me, I think that one of the last things and, and something that I'm learning right now, trying to not have your identity tied to, in my case, the YouTube channel. It's really difficult because the YouTube channel is me. It's my name, it's my voice, it's my face on all the thumbnails, it's my ideas. Uh, it, it is me, I'm not putting on a character here. This, this is who I am. And it's really difficult, especially in the beginning, to not tie your identity to this thing. This is part of why you know negative comments and criticism uh, hits so hard in some cases is because it in many ways is a, a personal thing. But the thing is, I'm learning it shouldn't. You shouldn't tie your personal identity or your personal sense of self-worth to the success or failure of a particular video or how your channel did that month or how many subscribers you got this year compared to last year. Because it's not an indicator of who you are. It's not an indicator of uh, the quality of your ideas or the quality of your creative expression or how good you are as a maker or a musician or a player. There are so many other factors and variables that go into determining how well a video does or how well your channel does or how well a song does on Spotify or whatever that is that are not tied to who you are as a person. Again, this is something I'm working through right now myself. Um, so pot, meat, kettle. But so I can empathize with a lot of these creators who are deciding to take a step back. I've thought about doing it myself. Uh, I'm not going to, that's not what this video is about. I'm actually in a much better place than I was six months ago uh, with my 
creative expression and where I'm at with YouTube and, and all this stuff, I'm excited again to keep doing this. This is a dream job. Uh, and like I said in my video I posted on New Year's Eve, it's a privilege to be able to do this. And I am incredibly grateful to be able to do this for a living. And in particular, I'm grateful for you who's watching this video, the audience, for allowing me to be able to do this for a living. It really is a dream job. Even though it's a job, it's a dream job. And I'm just so lucky to be able to do this. And uh, for those of you that are watching that want to do this or want to do your own version of this, I hope you found something in this video helpful. Um, I'll have Rick's video on this linked below, MKBHD's video on this linked below. Both of them are amazing creators I really look up to uh, and have a great perspective on this subject as well. And yeah, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching this. Um, see you on the next one.